guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video which is a special one today because it features a back-to-back -back test of the two fastest golfs you can buy right now. They might both roll off the Wolfsburg production line with around 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque from their four-cylinder petrol turbo engines and channel that through seven-speed DSG automatic gearboxes but that is where the similarities end. It is of course the brand new Golf GTI Club Sport and Golf R. Now in today's video we're going to explore the differences between these two cars and try and understand their relative merits. So let's get going by having a look at their on paper statistics. Okay then let's start off by talking about price. So as you might expect the Club Sport is a little bit cheaper. It's £37,230 basic. That would be in the standard colour of pure white. The R is about £2,000 more at £39,295 and again standard colour is pure white. The unfortunate thing is that if you spec Lappies Blue, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will, it takes you just over the £40,000 luxury car tax threshold. Right, let's talk about performance then. So they've both got the same Evo 4 EA AAA engine, so basically evolutions of the engines that are in the cars before the 7.5s. Club Sport produces 300 metric horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. The R produces 320 metric horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. Surprisingly the peak torque is a little bit different on these cars so it's from 2000 to 5200 rpm on the Club Sport. On the R it's from 2000 to 5800 rpm which is quite impressive really because yeah it's quite a significant difference and maybe it explains why this car is doing so well on the drag strip which brings me on to 0 to 60 times so this is front wheel drive it's got a VAQ front differential, which helps, but it still means you can spin the front wheels rather than just one. So it does 0 to 60 and still a very respectable 5.6 seconds. The R officially does it in 4.7 seconds, which is actually 0.1 of a second slower than the best time of 7.5 did. I think probably the 310 7.5. But as everybody's finding on the drag strip, these cars are a lot quicker. So originally Carware found this car did 0 to 16 just over Four seconds and when I say this car I mean this very car KY70 BLV they had it back again for a drag race and Matt Watson recorded 3.94 in this very golf so that is very impressive I'd love to know what this actually does on a drag strip great okay it's not going to be very quick 0 to 60 but in gear performance between these two cars would be a fascinating thing to watch so if you want to help a Matt give me a call weight wise they are as you expect quite different so this is actually 90 kilograms heavier than this and I'm 83 so that's 90 kilograms so this is 1551 kilograms this is 1461 kilograms I should have said they both do 155 miles an hour that is probably a software uh, limited speed to please the German government mpg wise well it's pretty much of a muchness really 38.2 mpg as a WLTP combined figure for this car, 36.2 for the R. And CO2 emissions are roughly the same sort of difference as well. So 167 grams per kilometer and 177 grams per kilometer. That has an impact on the first year road tax, which is just 540 pounds for this car. It's 870 for this one, but that's included in the on the road price anyway. So you probably wouldn't even notice that. Okay, those are the stats. Now let's have a look at the little changes made to these cars on their exteriors. So the Club Sport is basically a standard car with no extras on it apart from the Reflex Silver paint for £635. I fitted the Vozen HF2 wheels, which were a couple of thousand pounds, and they're fitted with Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 5 tyres. Just this morning, I fitted these wheel arch extenders, which the car would have had from the factory if it left the factory with 19 inch wheels so I thought I'd better fit them now we've got 19s they're 15 pounds each and I'll put the part number in the description of the video below if you want to order them for your car they just stick on which was a relief I thought they might be screwed in with a wheel arch liner screw but no they just stick on and they've got a little tab on them so you can line it up perfectly the R has got about two and a half thousand pounds worth of options so we've got the panoramic glass sunroof for a thousand pounds which we'll have a play with later we've got dynamic chassis control for 785 pounds which of course we'll have a play with later and we've got lapis blue 
paintwork, £755. That's a signature colour for the R. Big difference between the R and the Club Support is that everything on this car is either body coloured or gloss black. So you can see the front bumper is all this much more expensive looking gloss black, while on the Club Sport it's all just unpainted. So yeah, it will probably fade in time and you'll probably get loads of wax on it when you wax your car while on this. You can just wax it all. Big difference is you get this chunky sill cover on the R, which is body coloured. On the Club Sport, it's not as chunky and it's unpainted black plastic. But I think it has the unfortunate effect of making the R look a little bit bigger and therefore the 18 inch wheels are even more silly looking on this car. So we've got 18 inch Jerez wheels with just really miserable 225418 Bridgestone S005 Potenzas. So yeah, not a particularly high spec tire. It's remarkable this car did sub four seconds 0 to 60 on these tires. Eh? Anyway, you can upgrade them to the Esterils for £800, but if you do that, you're kind of 40% away from the performance pack. And with the performance pack, you get the big spoiler, which the Club Sport has as standard. So yeah, if you imagine that on here, that is basically the performance pack spoiler. You also get software changes, which means that you get the drift mode. But more importantly, you get manual shifting, proper manual shifting when you're in manual mode. Instead of the GTI's red stripe, we've got, as you probably might have guessed, a blue one on the R, but both cars get the light bar that sits between the headlights and glows, thankfully, just white at night when the headlights are on. On to the brakes then. Well, both cars have had upgrades over their previous models. So throughout the Mark 7 7.5 production, the standard brake disc on the R was 340 millimetres and it was a single piece brake disc, nothing special at all. There was a performance pack which gave you a two piece brake disc like this one, but it was still 340. On the Mark 8, as standard, we get 357 millimetre brake discs and they are two piece. We also get 600 grams lighter aluminium brake calipers. And please note, they are blue. This is the first time we've had a blue caliper on and R since the Mark V. You get exactly the same hardware on the Club Sport, which is a big upgrade over the 245 PS GTI. But of course the calipers are red. They are still 357 mil, they are still two piece. The TCR as standard had 340 mil two piece and they were pretty good on track when I tested them. These being bigger should be even better. So that's really good to know. The Club Sport is 15 millimetres lower than the standard Golf. The R is 20 millimetres lower. Hopefully you can see those rear wishbones there. have got little spoilers on them underneath them, which is the first. And that's just to make the car more aerodynamic. Both cars have got that, but it just kind of shows you the efforts Volkswagen have been to with these two super fast Golfs. You better have a look at the exhaust then. So we've still got the traditional four on the R. They're a little bit bolder now. This bit's a bit thicker. <clears throat> we have a rather tasty looking diffuser there. So I think much more aggressive than the old car and probably very close to that that was on the TCR. Yeah, that is really nice. It's a shame the Club Sport didn't really get that. On the Club Sport, which is parked really badly, we've just got two exhausts. As you can see, a little bit more subtle and they're ever so slightly oval now, which is the first for a GTI. And as you can see, the diffuser is it's there, but it's not as aggressive as the one on the R. Right, let's now have a look at the changes on the inside of these two hot golfs. Right then, today I promise to spare you any talk about the Mark 8 Golf's defining interior feature, the touchscreen, because I've covered that so many times before I'm sure you don't want to hear it and I don't want to go through it all over again. But if you want to find out more about it, check out my Mark 8 Golf playlist, which I'll put a link to in the description below, particularly the Club Sport versus TCR video where I show you some shortcuts with this screen that make life a lot easier. Today, we're really just going to ring the changes between the Club Sport and the R, starting with my Club Sport. So 
I think this interior in here is pretty good. Bear in mind, this is a standard production GTI. It's not limited in any way. So there could be some jazzier bits here and there. But overall, I think it gets away with it. The seats, I think, make it because we've got Art Velours. So you've got this lovely textured honeycomb pattern in the seat fabric. You've got enough red. And of course, you've got the standard sort of sports seats you see all the way from GTE all the way up to R. So yeah, they look pretty cool. Door cards, though, I mean, looking here, all I can see is grey, and that's a bit disappointing. So we've got this really boring cloth fabric in the door card that looks like it's off a of base model Golf. There is honeycomb there, but it's just grey as well. It really does need something to brighten it up. I'm not sure what. Seat belts, again, are plain. I think that's the same on the R. It's only BMW really these days that do really nice seat belts. They put the three colour stripe on their ones, which really do make a difference. Everything down here is the same as the one on the R. We've got the same steering wheel, which has got the haptic buttons. Obviously, we've got red instead of blue. We've got GTI instead of R. We haven't got the R button on the steering wheel there, which is a shame. Again, my parking sensors are having a Barney, probably because I'm backed up right against this wall here. We've got the normal paddles, which work perfectly fine. We've got the Digital Cockpit Pro, which means that that can be more GTI because it's just dig digital and can be programmed to look pretty cool. So that's the main GTI screen. We've got other screens as well, which are a bit less GTI, but that's, that's the bespoke screen for this model. Again, there's red here, but you can configure this to be whatever color you want. You can make this blue like an R if you want. You can make the R red if you want. So yeah, it's not bad in here, but is the R better? OK, guys, welcome to the interior of the Mark 8 Golf R. And first impressions are that it feels a little bit more expensive than the Club Sport in here, primarily because we have a few more textures in use. So if you remember, the Club Sport door card was just a wash of grey. Here we've got a lighter colour Alcantara. We've got a slightly darker elbow pad just here and very importantly the pseudo carbon inlays have got a lighter fleck in them which means they stand out a lot more and that extends right across the dashboard brightening this area up as well the floor mats are a bit more interesting so as well as a colored stripe you've got a some blue stitching you've got an r logo on a tab down there the seats are the same basic structure as those in the club sport but with different fabrics in use. So we've got fake leather outer with blue stitching and stripe. This sort of Alcantara bolster section that's lighter, which brightens up the cabin as well. And a normal fabric center that is a rehash of the 7.5 GTI TCR fabric, just with blue, weirdly. It's also pretty much identical to the R line, which just doesn't have the blue. We've got a proper stitched our logo in there as well, which looks good. This blue section around here probably is a bit OTT because it is quite a bright blue, but as I said, it livens up the cabin. That is red on the GTI as well, but it just doesn't seem as noticeable. Other than that, it is basically the same cabin. We have got the bigger paddles. I'm not sure how these are better really, but maybe with a bit more use, you'll kind of realize why they are. They do look better. They are still, of course, plastic. We've got the R logo on the haptic steering wheel and that means you can cycle the modes if you press it lightly like so or if you want to go straight to race so say you're in comfort just hold it down and there's two clicks and it goes to race and that then gives you the unique R configuration on the digital cockpit pro so it's a bit like the GTI when apart from the GTI had sort of a circular rev counter here the rev counter runs from left to right. So obviously there are other screens if you don't like that. Like that. I don't think there's an awful lot else to show you. Obviously you can pull down to the shortcut menu like I showed in the 7.5 TCR versus Club Sport video, which gives you access to the ESC system very quickly which is probably more useful on this car because you need to put the ESC in sport mode so you can use launch control as I will show you later. 
but before we go for a drive let's just have a quick look under the bonnet of these two super hot golfs okay under the bonnet they look similar as you probably would have expected but i think they're probably more similar than you might think because they've got the same engine code delta november foxtrot can you see that on the barcode just there that's the r and on the club sports again the nf so that means that basically when these engines were built they could have gone into either car what you can't see from the barcode is the fourth character of the engine code and that defines the software that runs the engine and that will define the power and torque now i kind of expected them to look the same under the bonnet but there is a difference and that is the screen wash tank there by the alternator well, over here there's a gap and it's here so the tank must be down there so what is in the inner wing under the headlight on this car because yeah that is interesting well if you know get in touch i'm really curious now obviously other differences are this is four-wheel drive so it's got a Haldex coupling that um, drives the rear wheels on this Mark 8. It can put 100% of the torque to the outer rear wheel in cornering. The downside with Haldex is that you lose a bit of boot space, but it's pretty minimal on the, in these generation of cars. Just seven litres less boot space in the R compared to the Club Sport and every other two-wheel drive Golf. Both cars have got seven-speed DSG automatics, and these are just super smooth and super fast nowadays. Anyway, guys, that's my appetite whetted. I think it's time to go and drive these two very hot golfs. OK, guys, here we are driving my Golf GTI Club Sport. And if you watch the TCR versus Club Sport video, you will know this car came out on top when it came to driving pleasure. And that should be a bit of a worry for the Mark 8 Golf R because the TCR had already beaten the 7.5 Golf R so the Mark 8 R has really got its work cut out to challenge this car when it comes to the thrill of driving. This car is on passive dampers so yeah the ride is a little bit busy but it's just about acceptable. This is a GTI it's not designed to be a comfort car but it does mean that you know what you're going to get so the modes are not linked to the dampers so I'm in sport mode now the most aggressive mode and I know the dampers are going to do what they've been doing all the time. It's, it's nice to have a very good default setting on these passive dampers. And it's just so lovely in corners like that. It feels, feels more than 90 kilograms lighter than they are, primarily because I think this car's been configured differently. So it just feels so much sharper on the front end. And the real big difference is that it's you and the car. There aren't electronics here who are going to help me if I turn in now and I start to understeer. They're not going to boot the back end out with a dab of torque with the torque vectoring. It's just me and the car. And it's great. Now a little tip with this car, and I think it applies to the Market R as well. If you hold the left hand pedal down, it puts you straight into the lowest gear ready to attack we do also have launch control and this is where the ESC shortcut comes in handy so it, we're nice and warmed up now we're going to put ESC into sport we're going to put it into drive which we're on I'm going to put my left foot on the brake and press down here yeah well that's uh, it's definitely not as instantaneous as the Golf R, that's for sure. Um, so you probably wouldn't be using that as much as you would in the Golf R, but there we go. We've done it and we've got it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's now go and drive the Golf R. Okay guys, well I may not have been the first person to review the Mark 8 Golf R, but I want to be 
the most thorough. So today we're going to cover a number of areas when it comes to the driving of this car in great detail, starting off with the chassis. Now this is a dynamic chassis control car which means it's got adaptive dampers. On the older cars you had the fixed modes of comfort, normal and race. On this Mark 8 we've now got comfort, sport and race. So basically sport is the new normal. Um, so you've got the three fixed modes but around those there are other calibrations that will let the car actually be softer and harder. Now for the road, the standard mode of sport, which is what the car will always start up in, is pretty well judged. So we're in that now, and that means the exhaust noise, it's got some character, but it's not full of pops and crackles like it is in race mode. So it's a perfectly usable mode for normal people, and the chassis feels pretty good. You can't really pick up the surface detail in this mode, it's a little bit too compliant. If you switch to race mode, suddenly the car changes significantly. So there's a bit more bellow from the exhaust, the ride is noticeably tighter, the display now has changed to the R mode with a linear rev counter and the steering feels a bit heavier as well. Unfortunately there is a lot of fake sound in this mode. I think it's coming through the speaker it just sounds like a food blender or a vacuum cleaner and that means you really need to get to grips with individual mode. So go into individual, first thing you need to do is I think set everything to race apart from the DCC and at the top of the screen there you've got multi adjustable DCC so I reckon probably sport is quite good for a road like that and then you need to then turn the engine sound to pure. That means it's completely switched off. But in every other respect, it feels like you've still got all the attributes of race mode. So the gearbox is in sport mode, and we've got drive, which will be throttle response. You've got, that probably affect the rear diff as well, which we'll come to in a bit. Steering's in, yeah, race, and some other stuff that really is quite irrelevant. So yeah, that's quite a nice, mode and you get the pops and crackles and there are lots and lots of them which is the first time for a Golf R hatch anyway. My Golf R Estate with OPF sounded amazing and I think this sounds even better and I've not driven a 7.5 or 7 hatch that sounds as good as my Estate so things have moved on. It's much like the club sport this car so pops, bangs, burbles, it's got it all. You can spend £3,100 on the Akrapovic exhaust but to be honest, I wouldn't really recommend it. You can buy a bloody good car that sounds better than this car with the Krapovich for £3,100. What you should do though, is spend £1,000 and then you can do this. You can have the sunroof open and let all that, that exhaust character come in. <laughs> and I think you can pull the blind forward as well. So. You don't get the wind if you don't want it, but you get the noise. Anyway, we'll close that now because we've got more important things to talk about. Now, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage with this car because I've not driven an R on passive dampers. I've not div driven a Club Sport with DCC. So I can't be too sure whether this car's character is defined by the fact it's got dynamic chassis control or whether that's just the way all R's are. But it feels significantly softer than the Club Sport, not just in the ride. Actually, the ride with DCC it's not that different between race and comfort to be honest, there's still a firmness to it and that's because it's got firmer springs than the 7.5 and the dampers can only really affect the ride so much when the springs are that firm. So when I say soft I mean when you put it into corners it really does lack 
the precision of the club spot. So this is the road I drove the club spot on. It felt like you could nail every apex to the millimeter. With this car, there is a degree of tolerance. Even in race mode now, it's just not as precise. It's still bloody good, but there's something about the chassis on those GTIs, even the 245, but particularly the club spot, that is mind-blowing and this car doesn't have it it feels a lot like the old car and that i think is because this car is chasing a different market it is a german car this car is not going for b roads this car is going for a roads and by that i mean the autobahn so if you have a real twitchy car at 155 it is not a particularly pleasant car to drive at those kind of speeds so they've backed it all off with this car to make it a car you can just sit at 155 all day long you can sneeze and you don't end up in the crash barrier so yeah it's lost a little bit of precision on roads like this but it's still pretty good i mean we're in relatively compliant dampers though and it does still sort of feel a little bit brittle over sort of manhole covers and other imperfections which is a bit strange but now we need to talk about the rear end of this car because that's where the changes are over the old one. So the front feels pretty similar. So what we've got now is a Haldex coupling, just like before, but before it was a bit dead. It didn't really do an awful lot while you were driving. Sure, it would help you drag race, it would help you in the snow, but it didn't really influence the car when you were going around corners. This one does. So it's got torque vectoring now, which means it will put up to 100% of all the torque to the outside wheels. I experienced it going under the M69 roundabout at the M1. I was M1 South, I actually started at the traffic lights, started off quite fast, turned in, and I think just as I was about to turn off onto the M69, it kicked the back out. A real shock, just ever so slightly, because it must have been sensing understeer and tucked the car in round the corner. I then tried that on a country road second gear corner very tight corner and expecting it to sort of do it and help me around the corner it just engaged the ESC and the car almost came to a, a grinding halt so it didn't like it and okay it makes the car a little bit more interactive and less likely to understeer but it's not the kind of thing that a driver can tap into and use and deploy at will maybe in the wet it will move around a bit more these Bridgestones are up to much but it's not very subtle when it does it I felt it before with Audis when they've got the sport differential and yeah it's it's better than a car that's totally inert but it's not something you can play with as a keen driver like you can with a balance of the club sport but you do get as a result a lot of stability in all weathers because you've got four-wheel drive and I think for a lot of people that will be a fair trade-off Okay, well that's the serious car journalist bit done. Now it's time for a bit of YouTuber fun. And firstly, we're gonna rev the engine at idle because that's what people do, apparently. Some cars have got a soft rev limiter, which means they don't really go above 3,000, 4,000 RPM, which isn't really much good in McDonald's car park. Well, the good news is this R doesn't, so it will rev all the way to the rev limiter when you're in park or neutral, which for some people, apparently, is really cool. It does it in any mode as well. So we'll start off in comfort. Right through to six. Let's try it in sport. Yeah, no problem. But race will be the one you want because somebody at Wolfsburg has actually designed the exhaust to sound good in race mode when you rev it at idle. What can I say? Wolfsburg is very different to how I remember it. Right. So yeah, it will sit at idle and rev and sound pretty cool. Now, I think it's time for launch control. So we need to be in race mode. We need to get rid of ESC, well, put it into sport. We need to be on the road here. Now, if you've got a stopwatch and you want to time the 0 to 60, I will tell you what to do. So left foot on the brake and that should be it. We're nice and warmed up. So foot down, it's active, so let's go. <laughs> Oh, 60. And it 
it's probably a good time to talk about this car's performance because it might be good at launching but it's really good in gear it's just so urgent even with four-wheel drive get out of the way pigeon even with four-wheel drive you can feel this car squirm might be because the bridgestones aren't all that but it's just great to feel an R that moves around a bit because they're just normally so tied down let's do that again then and this is why it's so quick on the drag strip because it really gets into its stride I really really want to see a drag race with a club sport not for the standing start but just to see if it can keep up with this in gear because I don't remember mine feeling like this but it's not really a car that encourages you to do that this car does for some reason which is probably not so great for your license but it's bloody good fun the good news is the brakes are pretty damn good as well so they look good stationary they work really well let's just test them now Ooh, that was almost painful what did I have for lunch I had a Cornish pasty for lunch so yeah the brakes are pretty damn good which is good to know considering how many people are going to be driving this car very very hard indeed okay guys well the sun is now setting on what has been a very long day during which I've tried very hard to get a feel for the characteristics of these two incredible golfs now the first thing I need to say is that we are very lucky that Volkswagen continue to make cars like these and we're also very lucky they continue to develop them over the previous generation cars which were already very good but that intense development has probably strengthened the individual character of these cars and made them even more different than they were before let's start off then with the club sport as you probably know from my tcr versus club sport video this is now a proper driver's car i don't think i've heard any reports in the media where they've really complained about the way this car drives which i think is a first for a golf and now it is a genuine rival for cars like the hyundai i30m focus st and the honda civic type r okay it may not be as extreme as the civic type r because it retains a lot of the daily usability that we love about a golf but you have to be a really keen driver to get the best out of this and let's face it not many people are for the majority of people, for just £2,000 extra, the Golf R makes a lot of sense because to the average driver, it's at least as much fun to drive. You get the prestige of the R badge. You get four-wheel drive. It's a real serious package for so many people. And I can see why Volkswagen predict that one in 10 Golfs will be an R. I'd be very surprised if one in sort of 50 was a club sport, but the fact we have got the ability to choose between these two is a very, very good thing. And there is no bad choice. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this Volks Wizard video. As ever, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment, please do share it. And please, please do subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one very soon.